Hi everyone, today is November 2nd, 2019, and this is the Duel Assessment, your podcast for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. My name is Green Ranger, and this week we have some new events going on. The Turbo Duel Grand Prix finally arrived. It was the first uh, new event that came in a really long time. And there's a lot to talk about the Turbo Duels as there are some new rewards, but then the way of obtaining the rewards is a bit tricky. And also, it's a PvP event, so that in its own takes some time where you're not auto-dueling. So we'll talk about some of the different things about that. The new cards, the skills, the EX skills, and things like that. We also have Scheming Weevil this week, so a few new cards from that event as well. Maybe Insectors will be something, maybe they won't be. Most likely not. Ranked Duels update, two new cards from that. And... Esports, we'll talk about esports. Some of the it's pretty unsettled right now, I must say. And Doug Dimaduel. Doug Dimaduel has his casual deck of the week. Ritual Beasts, which are not the worst archetype. They're the new archetype that are making some rounds in competitive play, but he has combined it with Guardian Iatos. So remember the card from the anime. That card came out um a few boxes ago, so he combines those graveyard emptying abilities of Ritual Beast with Guardian Yatos. So check that out later. So for my week wrapping up the month, I played a low. I think um, it's one of the first times in a while I haven't hit 100 ranked wins. It was somewhere in the 80s or 70s. I don't know what. But yeah, I was just... I just haven't been dueling that much. Ranked duels. I've just been auto-dueling things and busy with whatever... And by the end, when the ranked, I mean, when the Turbo Duels came out, there was no incentive to play regular ranked because the Turbo Duels did contribute to those wins for PvP. So I was just playing that at the end. And I I stopped at Legend 1. So it's not something I really care about, but um, it's the first time in three months I haven't hit King of Games. So there are two consecutive uh, months with that. And then this month was not. So. We'll see if that happens in November. Um, in terms of my Fortune Lady deck, I actually went through the box and got my third copy of Fortune Lady Calling, so I officially have um, the full version of Fortune Ladies, but um, I still struggle a lot with that deck. And I found, you know, playing through the Turbo Duel Grand Prix, that it took me forever to do anything, and I'm still stuck in it. So I decided... In, in my games, I played against a Japanese player who played Asceticism Six Sams, and I've copied that deck, and I'm getting through my Turbo Duels easier now, and let's just talk about this deck. Six Sams, 21 cards, tie that binds with Yusei, we've got Anishi and Dojo, those are the two semi-limited cards, so one in peace. You've got Elder of the Six Samurai, which is a special summon level 3. As long as they have a monster, you can special summon it. So there you go. Three Kageki. Kageki is the 200 attacker that become that special summons a card from the hand, and then it becomes 1700 when you have a monster on the board. Very important card for the Cetusism plays. Three copies of Fuma. Two copies of Legendary Secret. So Fuma and Legendary Secret pair up pretty well, as they've always done. Two copies of Kagamusha. Kagamusha is the other tuner, the level 2. That makes Kageki and Elder combined to level 5. So that's what uh, Kagamusha is for. And Kagamusha has 400 attack, which works with Asceticism and Elder of the Six Sam. Um, three copies of Six Sam are united. Three Asceticism, of course, uh, and two dual wields. Asceticism, of course, is the card that makes this version of Six Sam's different. And we don't have the other cards that don't really fit. 1900 attacker, um, 17, well, 1700 just could work, but the 1900 attacker notably isn't here. Uh, the 1800 special summon guy isn't here. Grandmaster isn't here. And, uh, Kageki, of course, 200 attack when it becomes, when there's an under monster on the board, 1700. 1700 is Anishi. 200 is Fuma. Kagamusha is 400. Elder's 400. So you can make some plays. And what I found out about this deck is it doesn't have it does have a really good OTK thing going on when you can get two things on the board 
and then get an Ishii special summon, synchro play, and then bounce them. Um, and that opens up the the extra deck, of course. You've got Rihan, Black Rose Dragon, two copies of Legend Shien, one HCS Saihemoth, and Wayne. X Saber Wayne can allow you to make those Aceta Summon plays just when you have the extra monks on the board. That is it with this 6 Sam deck that I will be playing. It's sad that I bought through those Fortune Ladies and I dropped them right away, but maybe I'll switch over to Fortune Ladies for the Kaiba Cup because uh, Dark Lords are everywhere. So I haven't seen a lot of Dark Lords in the Turbo Duels. I think that's the, the difference here. Let's talk about eSports, actual uh, competitive players. Meta Weekly, Duel Links Meta Weekly 96. Um, if you look at the breakdown here, it's pretty balanced. Top 32, 8 Fortune Lady, 7 Invoked, 5 Dark Lord, 4 Ritual Beasts. So, all of those, um, there was a bit of domination with Dark Lords or Invoked for a bit. And now it seems pretty balanced. We'll see how it goes. First place, negative 1, Kaiba Corp, Bling, Dark Lords. Um, full on Into the Void build here. 3 copies of Into the Void. You just draw a card, and then you discard the rest of the cards in your hand. Um, yeah, these cards, uh, Dark Lords don't mind being in the graveyard, so as long as they can keep recycling uh, Contact and Sanctify Dark Lord with Amdusk and Nastin. So all those cards are still in this deck. Second place, Wayne Kenoff, um, Transcendent Crystals, Crystrons. And uh, Transcendent Crystals really is just to dump Crystrons into the graveyard. The skill lets you send cards to the graveyard and then take the Crystal Beasts from your deck and put them in the spell zone. You've only got two copies of Crystal Beast Emerald Tortoise here. So, you know, that's just a way to dispose of your Crystrons proactively, to have them there already. Um, this could be a way to play Crystrons moving forward, frankly. I mean... Uh, everyone has Transcendent Crystals, and as, so as long as you start off with one of them in the graveyard, you can get into your single plays right away. Third place, KC Full, Draw Sense High Level Ritual Beasts. So Ritual Beasts are a deck um, that are using Draw Sense High Level. They're, they're one of the first decks in a while to do that. And why do they do that? It's not a pure Ritual Beast deck. It is a engine for Destiny Hero Plasma. This is a card we only have one copy of, but it's level 8. You have to have three monsters on the board. Tribute them. Negate the effects of face-up monsters when your opponent controls them. Once per turn, target one monster your opponent controls. Equip it. This card gains attack equal to half of the original attack of that monster. Kind of like uh, Vampire Vamp, if you remember that card. But this one is... 1900 plus that half attack, so it'll be like 3000. And more than 3000. It's kind of like Vamp, yeah. And uh, you negate the effects of their monsters, so it's pretty much unstoppable at this point with all the monster effects going on. And then the, the rest of the Ritual Beasts, just to make the deck work one copy of Spiritual Beast Tamer Winda, three Canahawk, one Petal Fin, one Rampangu, three Tamer Elder, one Apelio, one Wen. Three Cosmic Cyclone, two Econ, one Ritual Beast Bond, and two Ritual Beast Ambush. You have two copies of each Ritual Beast ulti in the extra deck. Third place, Scrocky, Seal Tomb, Stromberg. Pretty much the typical Stromberg deck. It's very weird when you first see it, but this is the one that people play. Three Lava Golems, three Psychic Wheel Dealers, three Glyph, three Gren Maju Daiza. One Princessin, one Pumpkin Carriage, two Econ, I mean, two Econ, two Cosmic Cyclone, three Stromberg Castles, one Glass Slippers, two Floodgate, one Shadow Imprisoning Mirror. The Lava Golems, obviously, are, you know, for clearing their board. Psychic Wielder lets you get into Synchro Plays. Grand Maju the Eza is a free 3000, pretty much, so a lot of power in this deck. Let's talk about um, Duel Links Taiwan. So Duel Links Taiwan Weekly 78. Uh, they have a huge variety of decks, of course, and this is one, this tournament is no different. Um, pretty unsettled there. They don't really follow a meta, per se. They probably do, but 
the decks that win are really rogue. Let's check these decks out. First place, Frame Kaiser. Two decks here. Level, Augmentation, Dark Magician, Fortune Lady. So, Fortune Lady core is a bit reduced. You've got only one wind, because they have other ways of clearing spells, it seems. Three past. I guess they have three Fortune Lady water. That's the difference here. So they replaced, replaced the wind with a water. Then they still have the three copies of Fortune Lady Calling and Fortune Vision. Now in terms of the Dark Magician package, three Magician's Rod, three Dark Magician, one Illusion Magic, and three Magician Navigation. So they cut out Fortune Lady Light. 21 card deck. Um, Fortune Lady's Brick occasionally, and then you have to play a monster that's kind of weak. Really weak. And Magician's Rod, Illusion Magic, Mag Magician's Navigation, they all get their two Dark Magicians on the board really easily. So uh, it helps with that aspect of it. And of course, making Fortune Lady uh, every, you just need a Spellcaster. So Dark Magicians or Magician's Rod are already Spellcasters. you got some generic Synchros and otherwise Vermilion, Dragon, Black Rose... White Aura, Dolphin, Samsara, and Samurai Destroyer. Now the other deck that Frame Kaiser brought was Dinosaurs, Reptilian, Lamia, Dinosaurs. And this deck is incredible. It's got... There's some control cards, obviously. One, three copies of Hyper Hammerheads, a dinosaur. But then you just bounce the opponents. Um, Survival's End is a pretty much a, um, a card you could... Used to nullify anything. You just turn that on. You just turn that on toggle on, and then you just wipe out stuff, get stuff on the board. You know, you you do that combo of baby source. and of course it works really well with normal monsters. You've got your Paleozoics in here as well, but Reptilian Llama is a tuner here, level two tuner, and when you use it as synchro play, you turn two of their monsters on the field to zero attack, and that's basically the point of this deck. This Reptilian Llama doesn't come out fast. She's a normal speed level 2 tuner. But then you've got all these like level 4 monsters in this deck, and then you make some level 6 synchro plays with you know, Arche Flame Veil Arcesius, Archfiend's Call, White Aura Dolphin, Hyper Psychic Riser, Stardust, Charge, Warrior. And then you just beat them, because they have two monsters with zero attack, and then you just hit them with 2,000 attack dinosaurs, or you hit them with a big synchro guy. So, a really incredible deck. And dinosaurs are not dead. <laughs> if you do have... I guess Hyper Hammerhead's the one that's kind of get, hard to get. I feel like I have all these cards because I bought Valhalla Calling enough. I might try this deck, actually. It's pretty cool. I should have the Reptilian Llama because I bought Valhalla Calling. So it's an SR in that deck. Very cheap deck here. As long as you did the Hassleberry event, of course. Second place, Jasper 02. Time Passage, Fortune, uh, Parsha Fortune Lady. This is the... You know, car, uh, counter trap version. You've got your core: one Fortune Lady Light, two pa uh, Wind, three Past, two Water, three Fortune Lady Calling, one Fortune Vision, two Econ, one Binding Destiny, and then your counter traps. Binding Destiny is a counter trap. Um, one Wiretap, one Ultimate Providence, and three copies of Rebirth of Parshaf. And then Jasper O2 also bought the um, Ritual Beast Plasma deck, same deck as the one I discussed before. Except there's a lot more back row options. They do have Unending Nightmare, a card that did see a bit of play before. It was it was notable in Ancient Gear decks before they found a better way of doing it, I think. Third place, Zangetsu, Kaiba Corp, Bling, Dark Lords. This is pretty much a Dark Lord deck, except for they threw in Lava Golem. Um, and they're still trying to get creative with ways to use the second, uh, the semi-limit cards, so... Um, no more World Legacy Clash. They have Wall of D in this deck. And then uh, Draw Sense Dark invoked Magician Girls. Magician Girls have found a way to be useful because of Chocolate being a water type. And this deck has some Earth cards. Barry's an Earth card, but it also has Sazank for some reason. And, you know, pretty much invoked are cool and uh, budget effective because you don't need three copies of the cards. You only need one Invocation. And... I mean, invocations you get because they're SRs. No, they're URs. Never mind. Uh, you just need more than one copy of Alistair, typically. And then third place, Sarah, 
I that binds Cyber Dark uh, Desperado, Cyber Dark Neos. This monstrosity of a deck is back. Except this deck runs double trap hole, a card that was virtually unplayed. And this card specifically is used to counter Invoked Coxitis, because that's the card that is summoned in defense mode. Special summoned in defense mode. That's the only card that is, I think. And then a horrible deck, uh, in my own opinion, Tie That Binds Invoked Sylvans. If you listen to this show in the past, Sylvans are the deck I hate the most because they're RNG. And this is a Sylvan deck with two copies of Alistair and one Invocation, and the rest is Sylvans. Two Komashrumo, two Rose Lover, one Hermitry, three World Championship Carrot, Carrot Way Champion, <laughs> Championship Carrot, three Martial Leaf, Martial Leaf is off, two Guardi Oak, two uh, Mer- Magical Merchant, and two Floodgate. So Sylvans makes sense, right? Martial Leaf is a Water type, that's Coxitis. Fire type, Komashrumo. Oh, they don't use fire types. Never mind. Uh, Carrot is a dark type. And then the other ones are earth types. So, um, makes a lot of sense. And I've actually seen Sylvans in the Turbo Dual Cup. In the Grand Prix, I mean. And I've lost the Sylvans again. And I really don't want Marshall Leaf being unlimited to make a huge difference. I'm still going to say they're not competitive. And I hope they're not competitive. Only time will tell whether that is the case. Move to the tier list that Duel Links meta makes every week. First, uh, t- tier 1 Dark Lords are still there. Um, I think there is a bit of an identity crisis though. Dark Lords don't know what skill to play. We've seen different skills being used. Kyber Corp Bling seems to be making the rounds. Um, yeah, I think that is their one problem right now. And the decks are not really completely defined. Uh, Tier 2, we have Fortune Lady only. Fortune Lady, they mentioned Super Team Buddy Force Unite being in addition to the deck. Though I haven't seen it myself, but um, Fortune Ladies are the main counter to Dark Lords. I think that's why uh, their success hinges on how many Dark Lords are being played. They're really strong otherwise. I think I just don't know how to play a deck. I think I have a bias against that, but um, it's one option I could use to play. Uh, But still, um, very good deck. Tier 3, Invoked and Neos. Invoked, I feel, it's just uh, such a wild card. You don't know what deck it's going to show up in. And, um, of course, when these two decks are combined together, it's pretty strong. But Invoked, I think uh, Magician Girls are one that are seeing a lot of play. Of course, we just saw the Sylvan deck, so they could really go in any direction. So as long as the attribute monsters fit the deck. And then we have a bunch of high potential decks. Crystrons, Magnet Warriors, Ritual Beasts, and Yosenjus were all put in high potential. And a bunch of old decks that have dominated are removed. Ancient Gears, Blue Eyes, Desperado, Six Sams, Spellbooks, and Triamids. I think they're just off the radar for the tournament scene as of now. But I, I, I can't see these decks disappearing right away. I think they will show up in some capacity for the Kaiba Cup. Six Sam's probably will come back. Alright, so then that moves us to the podcast question of the week. What will be the top deck of the November Kaiba Cup? So, um, that's coming up soon, probably in a week or two. And um, if the meta is what it is now, it's a bit undefined, but we do have some clear favorites. 31% said Dark Lords, 31% said Invoked, so we have a tie there. 14% said Fortunate Lady, and 24% said Other. Gas Station Gyoza says, I think Invoked has a pretty good chance of dominating the KC Cup. It's splashable in any fusion deck. So which Invoked deck will win? We will have to see. Yeah, this is the main uh, surprise, if you will. I bet it's some other deck. It probably will be Magician Girls, but you know you could just put in any deck that fits the attributes. Pro Bench Warmer. Dark Lords single-handedly. They put up big monsters consistently, still because Banishment is the band-aid holding the deck together. Yeah, I think I I let off with Dark Lords being first, because that's the deck I think will win, uh, dominate the KC Cup. It's just, of course, finding what skills work, what monster composition, because they 
and kind of got thrown out of whack with the semi limit. And I think the Am Dusk Am Dusk has to be widely played, and it's just those two back row cards. What will those cards be? Dark Slayer Areem, Dark Lords for free LMAO. Oxymoron NL says Dark Lord got n- oofed by nerfs. Um, they they did get nerfed, but I think the card consistency of the way that they recycle is just way too good. Um, that it didn't really matter, but it's just, I guess those those utility slots. It's like how they could be cards to anti meta cards, like the if they're struggling against Coxitis or whatever or Fortune Ladies. Maybe cards to hit those cards. Coxitis recent uh, there was that double trap hole card um, that counters Coxitis, so that's that's a card that could come up. You could use uh, Shadow Imprisoning Mirror, but then that affects your own cards too, so you probably don't want to do that. I don't know. There's probably some meta countering specific trap that they could use. I don't know. Dark Lords do have so much power though, and their ability is just way too good. Um, yeah, I haven't even talked about uh, Ritual Beasts. Ritual Beasts with Plasma, which we've seen uh, in these recent tournaments, could be a sleeper, of course. Crystrons, too. Crystrons are pretty good. So, and Magnet Warriors. There's just a lot of contenders right now, so we don't really know. We will see. We still have a week to wait before the Kaiba Cup anyways. Alright, let's talk about the three packs and one UR sale. This is the best sale in Duel Links. Um, sometimes they say you know three SR, I mean three packs and one SR for one ninety nine is a good deal. No, this is the real deal. Three packs and one UR for ninety nine cents American. Of course, with the tax, I think it's like one oh seven, but you know, same thing. And um, I hate to plug it again, but I I like it. Um, Google Opinion Rewards is an app on Android phones. They track where you go, so might as well get some money out of it. If you go to a store or a restaurant or you pass by somewhere, they'll ask you if you went there, how you paid for it, things like that. And then this is money for your, your dual links. So I tapped into the sale a few times. I'm uh, down to 179 so I could buy one more box of things. But um, with these URs, it's good to target uh, mini boxes specifically because you have a 33% chance of getting the UR. I think the Dread Box, the Revenge Dread Box... I actually used this on that box, and I've never bought that box before. Mm-hmm. And I got one copper of, copy of Plague Spreader Zombie. That was the one card I wanted. So, of course, I have to buy that box some more to get those fusion cards. I mean, the synchro plays um, with the Plague Spreader Zombie, of course. But I pretty much sniped that box. I could only buy... I don't need to buy too many of those because I got my Plague Spreader Zombie. So I was pretty happy about that. Um, other ones, I tried to get the um, the one with the Invoke, the recent box with the Invoked. I tried to get that, but I got something else. Uh, I'll probably tap into that box a few more times just to get another copy of Alistair. But definitely take advantage of the sale. Let's move on to the topic that is the Turbo Duel Grand Prix. This is the culmination of several... Turbo Duel events they've had going. And this is the first one that's actually devoted to Turbo Dueling. And it's a PvP event. Two new cards from this event. And then some repeated ones. The struggle here is getting all the cards. And I've already felt that myself. Let's talk about the duels themselves. They're Turbo Duels. Exclusives to 5D. So that's some flavor where you can't use every skill. Because every... Oh, the five these characters can't do certain skills. So the meta is more there's more of a meta than ranked duels if you're playing turbo duels. So you you see the same decks. If you're facing Carly, you know what you're facing. If you're facing you say you typically know what you're facing, things like that. And um you play against a PvE character first, and then you play some duels against people from then on. And uh, they're, they give you rewards for doing it three times a day at least, so make sure you do your three duels so you get your gems. Um, you get gems, otherwise they count towards the rank duel. So I really don't see any reason to not play turbo duels right now as they count towards your rank duels, and they give you this reward. So I uh, might as well work towards it, right? And then the ranked 
meta might be a little softer by the time you get to it. Anyways, you get gems. I mean, you get coins for the lottery. Typically, like, a couple... You, I mean, you, you go for a lottery when you get 300 gems. Um, you get some things. The losses don't give you nothing either, though. So the losses will give you, like, I don't know, like, uh, 80, 80 coins. So, um, you could grind through the losses, too. And, um, you dip into boxes, kind of like, um, there's different rounds. So, right now, I am in the professional cup. There's different cups. And you just go through them for different rewards. So there's the Amateur, Standard, Professional, Elite, and Master Cup. You have to win the Standard Cup a certain number of times, though. So that is a bit of a grind of its own. Uh, professional Cup, I need to win four more rounds. Um, so four more wins to move on to Elite. So I don't know if I could even do that with the time I have. And um, the boxes where you could dip into rewards... Uh, they they guarantee you a central shield and they guarantee you a doppel warrior, but you have to get through box two to get that central shield. You have to go through box three to get that doppel warrior, and then there's a box four as well. So it's all about wins. And my dual record isn't great with the fortune ladies. It was a huge struggle. It's better with the six sams I've been playing now, but it's a bit of a it's a bit of a grind. Like. In the, and then the rewards themselves, they dilute them with the cards you already have. Like the Goblin Routing Squad or the Armored White Bear. They're all cards I already have, so... I don't really... I have zero Doppel Warriors, I think, right now. I've, I might have one Central Shield. I'm not really sure about that either. But the combination of it being hard to get these rewards and... The dilution of the lottery. I'm not going to get three doppelwares. I'm pretty sure. I might get to the one that they give me. But then the, the rest is RNG. I don't really care about Central Shield. I want some doppelwares. But uh, I could let that go. But even some of the gems. You're losing out on a lot of gems. If you don't make it in time. There's only two days left of this event. So I might run out of time. Um, in terms of the EX skills. You could play with these three motorcycles. You, you, you say... Um, motorcycle, it has a huge appeal of the, the 10, 10 counter player, destroy one card your opponent controls, because that ability gets around graveyard protections, I've realized. I've had 6 Sam, EN, uh, Shen on the board, they wipe it out, Fuma can't protect it, my monsters on the board can't protect it, so that play gets around a lot of things. So that's a huge um, advantage of uh, Yusei's skill. Um, Crow Hogan's, um, I was attracted to this one because you could draw two cards with the 10 play, but very little power. It's about manipulating things into tuners and levels. This is the one that's harder to do, and you could make it work if you're not using a skill modulating thing, but not really. And then, um, Jack Atlas's motorcycle is one of the best ones, I think. Uh, the 6 play is draw a card, 8 play, gain a thousand attack. 10 play, double the attack. So this is the power one. This is the one I use right now. Um, you just double your guys and they're 5,000 attack and you win the duel. So pretty solid with six Sams. So anyways, um, let's get to the cards themselves. The two cards. Doppel Warrior, level 2, Dark Warrior, 800 attack, 800 defense. When a monster is special summoned from your graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand. If this card is sent to the graveyard as a synchro material, you can special summon two doppel tokens in attack position. So this card is like a synchro material. It's kind of like Quillbolt, Hedgehog, and Psychic Tracker. They're fast synchro materials. And this is a card you want more than one copy of in the deck because the consistency of this card being special summoned is maximized. Uh, that's the main drawback of this card. It has to be in the hand to be special summoned. And Instead from the deck versus. And it's not very useful if it's not being used in Synchro Summon. So this is a Synchro Devoted play. It works It works very well with Junk Synchron. So you, you get, let's say you're playing Akiza, you you play Junk Synchron, you get Dark Verger, and then you cheat out Dop Warrior, and then you have a level 7 play. And then uh, you can get some tokens on the board, that's the main 
heal Doppel Warrior. It also works as Treeborn Frog. That, that's a card that comes out of the graveyard each turn, so then you could do some synchro play there. The problem with these cards, like Psychic Tracker is not even being played with Psychic Wielder anymore. It's just thrown into decks, but Quillbolt's never really seen any play. These cards aren't really necessary. Decks that do synchros well won't need a card like this um, to add levels. They might just have a skill that adds levels to cards. Fortune Lady, for example, does that with uh, Time Passage. So, you know, this card is neat for what it is. It's a fast synchro material, but at this point, do we even need this card? And I know I was a little upset about not having this card, but this is a card I like to have a copy of. And Central Shield, Equip Spell, Equip to a monster you control. You take no battle damage from attacks involving a monster you control, other than the equipped monster. So the monster that gets this is probably in defense mode somewhere. Indestructible or something. It's pretty bad for an equip spell. Like, equip spells are generally bad. Only a few of them are playable. Like, Power of the Guardians and probably Morge Slog are, are playable equip spells now. But this one doesn't do anything. You just protect yourself. And I guess it's good for a card that can't be destroyed, of course, that has, like, a Fortress Guardian where you just put it on the Fortress Guardian. But uh, this could be something for Amazonus. You put it on the Queen and then you ram the other cards to banish... They won't be taking damage because Amazon is liked ramming weak monsters to banish them. That's the only play I see, Amazon is queen, but uh, very limited play. I don't really care if I get this card, but I already have a copy, so yeah. Anyways, that's the wrap-up of Turbo Duel Grand Prix. I'm not too satisfied with it. I mean, I like the direction they're going with a, with a PvP event. I'd like it to be a permanent game mode. They could step down their rewards and just have it as a permanent game mo game mode for people who want a change from just playing ranked duels. People who are super good to get through King of Games in a few days. This could be a good change of pace. It's a different rule set. Obviously with the EX skills and Yusei's ability to destroy something, that requires playing around it on its own. So there are definitely new strategies to explore here. I'd like it to be a permanent game mode, but this current version with this grind, not too friendly for the casual player, not too friendly to me. Um, I guess I should have just put more games into it, but I mean, I will put more games into it in the next two days and see what I get, but definitely um, a little difficult right now, I must say. Let's move on to Scheming Weevil, just a roaming duelist. His storyline's not really settled. He's just playing in Zektrons. I think that's the whole thing right now, but we will see what his story entails. Uh, his cards are interesting. There's two new cards and then repeats of cards we did not previously get three copies of. So um, that's something to look out for. Here's a new one. Insector Firefly, level one dark. Insect 100, 100. Once per turn, you can equip one Insector from your hand or graveyard to this card. If an Insector equips this card, you can look at all the set cards your opponent controls. While this card is equipped to a monster, that monster's level is increased by 1. It gains attack and defense equal to this card's attack and defense. So, if you don't remember, Insectors equip themselves to each other. And this card is a spying mechanic. We don't have many spying mechanics in Duel Links other than playing Pegasus. There's probably another one, but it sucks. Um... So this is useful if you want to spy on your opponent's set cards. How do I explain this? This card's not useful unless you don't know what the meta is, or there's a million rogue decks running around. The, knowing the meta is the point of predicting around the set cards. You see the character, you see the skill, you might see what they're playing as a monster. Unless the monster's in defense mode, they could keep you guessing. And then you could try to guess what that back row is. That's the point of ranked duels, right? That's the point of competitive card games. You try to know the meta to play around what you can't see. Insector Fly Firefly lets you do that if you have no idea what you're doing. Like, you could just be playing Duel Links on day one, jump right into Ramp up Legend 1. And Zector Flyerfire is good for that. So, 
that's all it's for. This card being equip being an equipment itself is very useless. Just one level, one hundred attack and defense for your insector. So this card is only useful for that aspect of spying on your opponent's cards. Uh, we get another copy of Insect Queen. This is the third copy of Insect Queen. We previously got two. Uh, one from Weevil, one from level 7. So we always just had two of these, and this is the third copy. Pretty much inconsequential, because Insect Queen was never played on its own. Even in the earliest stages of the game, no one played Insect Queen. I think there was the the one that came with the egg, the Golden Cocoon or whatever. Um, The Quick Play Golden Cocoon. That one was... It was like a upgraded insect queen, but this one was never never saw any play. The other new card is probably the chase card of this set. Level six uh, insector giga weevil. Level six dark insect zero attack twenty six hundred defense. You can target one face up insector monster you control. Equip this card from your hand to that target. While this card is equipped to a monster, that monster's original defense becomes twenty six hundred. If this card is sent to the graveyard while equipped to a monster. You can target one Insector monster in your graveyard. Special summon that target. This effect can be used once per turn. So we have a similar card called Insector Gigamantis. That one gives 2400 attack. This one gives 2600 defense. One difference is that this card can special summon itself from the graveyard after being sent there. You could send it there yourself. From Econ Take, you could get destroyed. It will just come back. Gigamantis can't summon itself. It could summon another card other than itself. So this is useful for getting a six level six monster on the board. Um you know for various reasons. Synchro plays, XZs in the future, um, whatever. So this is a way to get a level six on the board. Uh probably the chase card of this set. Bombardment Beetle, um this is a card we only had one copy of before. Insect flip effect Pick up and see one face down defense position monster card on your opponent's side of the field. If it's an effect monster, destroy it. The flip effect is not activated, and if it's not, return it to its original position. So, it's clear why they didn't give us a ton of this card before, because you could just control your opponent's board infinitely. Um, chances are the monster is, a def- is a, an effect monster, so this is a pretty much flip and destroy. Um... So, obviously, with flip cards, you can think about sub-terrors. You can just keep recycling this ability. Um, well, it's not Sentry Golem, though. You can't use the ability over again. You have to use some kind of trap card to help yourself recycle. I think that's the difference here. And then Eradicating Aerosol. This is a card we only had one copy of. Destroy all face-up insect monsters on the field. We do see these types of cards in um, tournaments where... Acid Rain is probably the most common one. There's the one that destroys the Spellcasters, Last Day of the Witch. Certain cards like this, when the meta is so saturated with a certain type, I don't think we're there anymore. Um, I mean, the Dark Lords are fairies. I don't think there's a card that destroys all fairies. So, um, Eradicating Aerosol, keep it in your collection when the insects take over, which will probably be never. I can't say that. I don't know. The insects could just take over someday, I don't know. So that is it with the Scheming Weevil event. I actually do like these two cards. They're not the worst cards. Um, The Giga Weevil I like. Firefly I like just just because it's a cool ability. I don't like... The card kind of sucks on its own, but... Overall, this is uh, not the worst event in terms of cards. A couple of new more cards to talk about. This is from the Ranked Duels update. These are the two new rewards we get in this month of November for our Ranked Tickets. Um, Familiar Possessed Dark. Level 4 Dark Spellcaster 1850-1500. You can special summon this card from your hand or deck by sending one face of Dark, the Dark Charmer you control, and one face of Dark Monster you control to the graveyard. When you do, you can add one level 3 or level 4 Light Spellcaster from your deck to your hand. If this card was special summoned by this effect and attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing battle damage to your opponent. So on the stats, this card is not too impressive on its own. 1850. But what it can do is special summon from the deck, which is huge. Um, Dark, The Dark Charmer is a card we already have. 
this card has a flip effect where you can steal. You can take control of one dark monster your opponent controls while this card remains face up. So obviously, your opponent has to have a monster, a dark monster. You flip dark, the dark charmer. Now you have both. Then you, you tribute them for this card in the deck. And then you add a level 3 or level 4 light spellcaster from your deck to your hand. Uh, the piercing's whatever. It's only 8, 1850. Um, it's a very situational play, but it's not crazy. I think I um, I saw this card as a card that was kind of dumb, but seeing how it could sub special summon from the deck, it's very interesting. Um, obviously, it's a chaos type card because you're adding a light spellcaster. A light spellcaster obviously could be um, Silent Magician. So you could just package this with Silent Magician. And yeah, you could tribute this card for Silent Magician. That's not the worst play in the world. Overall, um, the ability to steal your opponent's card and play around protections and things like that is very cool. I actually like this card now. Now that I've actually read the effect instead of writing a review for a card I didn't really understand. I will be getting this card. The R ticket is for Smashing Horn, Counter Trap. When a monster effect or trap is activated that negates the normal or special summon of a monster, negate the activation and destroy it. So, another card I misread. If, I thought Paleozoic Canadian Floodgate kind of worked, but they don't really negate like a summon of a card. This is against a card like Void Trap Hole or, not Void Trap Hole, Network Trap Hole, Things like that. Um, I mean, it's fine. It's an R ticket. You're probably going to get this card anyways. And counter traps, of course, um, they open up play for the Parshaf package. So um, this might actually work against uh, things like Bending Destiny and um, Champion's Vigilance, actually. This might be a counter for those cards. So it's something to consider as an R. Finally, the card trader inventory has updated. Arm Dragon level 7 is available if your art tickets. Uh, Arm Dragon was never viable, so sure. We get our third copy of it here. Um, they're doing this thing where they're rounding up the third copies of every card, so I'm, I'm not opposed to that either. Ongoing thing. Alright, let's move on to Doug Dimidul, his casual deck of the week. If you don't know what to do with your ritual beasts, he has a idea, a cool new idea. I think it's the first of its kind. He combines it with Guardian Iatos. So check out Doug Dimadul's Ritual Beast Guardian Iatos deck right now. Hey there, this is Doug Dimadul with Doug's Casual Deck of the Week. This week I wanted to run a deck that's uh, pretty interesting uh, out of the new box. It's uh, all about the uh, spiritual beast and ritual beast monsters. Uh, really the whole name of the game is to get ritual beast uh, Ulti Apelio out of the deck. It's a level 6, uh, 2600 attack, which requires one ritual beast tamer and one spiritual beast monster. It must be special summoned by banishing uh, the cards you control. It cannot be special summoned by using polymerization. Uh, if this card attacks, it's unaffected by other cards card's effects until the end of the damage step. During either player's turn, you can return this card you control to the extra deck and then target two of your banished monsters, uh, one Ritual Beast Tamer monster and one Spiritual Beast monster. So really the name of the game is to get a bunch of stuff out into your banished, uh, banished area, uh, all of your Ritual uh, Spiritual Beast monsters and your Ritual Beast uh, shenanigans there. Ritual Beast Tamer Elder seems to be the really good uh, card to go with as far as Ritual Beast Tamers go. Now what Ritual Beast Tamer Elder does, it's a level 2 psychic. It's got real weak stats. It's got a 200 attack, 1000 defense. Uh, after you normal summon this card, you can normal summon one Ritual Beast monster during your main phase in addition to your normal summon or set. You can only special summon Ritual Beast Tamer Elders once per turn. So really you're just able to get two monsters onto the field and just get right into 
your Ritual Beast Ulti Apelio play. There's also the UR in the most recent box set, the Spiritual Beast Tamer Winda. Uh, if this card in its owner's possession is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, you can special summon one Ritual Beast monster from your deck or extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. You can only special summon one Spiritual Beast Tamer Winda once per turn. So, uh, and really the big, I guess the big driving card that I really like out of this deck is Spiritual Beast uh, Petal Fin. It's level 4 Aqua, 0 attack, 2,000 defense. Once per turn, you can banish one Ritual Beast card from your hand, then target one card your opponent controls and return it to the hand. So basically what you're able to do is just run your play, uh, essentially just you know banishing a card from your hand to uh, send a card back to your opponent's hand, and uh, then getting into your extra deck play. So really the whole driving force here is that you're going to have a lot of cards in your banish zone so i wanted a quick hit to just flood the field and go for an otk well you do realize that we have guardian etos it's a I believe it's a level eight wind fairy 2500 attack 2000 defense if you have no monsters in your graveyard which with ritual beasts you really shouldn't have many monsters in your graveyard if that uh, you can special summon this card from your hand you can send one of your equip spells, which in this deck, I don't run any equip spell cards. But either way, you get a 2,500 attacker on the field. Piece of cake. Um, but yeah, basically you're going to be banishing a lot of your Ritual Beast and Spiritual Beast monsters. Uh, the only stuff that should be hanging out in your graveyard are the uh, le- are the spells and traps that you run. And really all I run in this deck are just two copies of Wall of Disruption. You could really just put any trap card or spell card that you want in there. Uh, I do run three copies of Spiritual Beast Paleo. It's a level four. This is really to kind of get that Etos play going, because if there's anything hanging out in your graveyard, you can banish it using Spiritual Beast Paleo's effect. It's got an 1,800 attack, and once per turn during either player's turn, you can banish one Ritual Beast card from your graveyard. For the rest of this turn, all Ritual Beast monsters you control will gain 500 attack and defense. You can only special summon Spiritual Beast Paleo once per turn. So that's really, if you have just if something got destroyed in your last turn then go ahead and banish it using spiritual beast apelio and then finally we have spiritual beast uh canahawk it's a it's this sr out of the most recent box it's a level four 1400 attack once per turn you can banish one ritual beast card from your deck face up during your second standby phase after this effects activation activation add the card banished by this effect to your hand so really what you could do is use Spiritual Beast Cannon Hawk to get one of your Ritual Beasts or Spiritual Beasts into your Banished Zone uh, after hopefully getting into Ritual Beast Tamer Elder Play. So that way you know you're going to have two monsters on the field to get into your extra deck. Basically what you do is then you send out your Ritual Beast uh, Ulti Apaleo after using your Spiritual Beast Canahawks play. Uh, and then basically banish, maybe for example you want to banish your Spiritual Beast uh, Petal Fin, which will then allow you to uh, you know send a card back to your opponent's hand. So by activating the uh, Ritual Beast Ulti Apaleo's effect to then put two cards back onto the field, you can bring back that spiritual beast petal fin activate its effect and then go back into your uh, ritual beast ulti paleo uh, back onto the field by sending those two ritual beast spiritual beast monsters back to your banished zone so really it allows you to pick and choose what you want to um, i guess bring back onto the field before then ultimately going into your boss monster play so uh, as far as otk potential all you really need on the field is either a spiritual beast canahawk or something stronger like a spiritual beast of paleo and uh, you need your ritual beast ulti of paleo and basically you're able to just go for game that way as long as you have a spiritual beast pedal fin play somewhere along the line to uh, clear out any monster that may have been on the field if there's just one monster that's going to be stopping you but uh anyway i mean this this deck it's it's pretty good i've had a lot of fun using it in the pve uh areas but uh guardian etos i think adds a nice little uh wrinkle to this uh because again having quick turn one turn two fill the board swarm the field type plays uh, it, it just really fits in this deck, the fact that uh, you don't really have many monsters in your graveyard. So uh, Guardian Etos, having a quick 2,500 on the field, makes things just a little bit more competitive. Now, uh, you could always try and run the skill beat down, so you could try and go for a one-turn OTK. Maybe tie that binds could work. I like to use Draw Sense high level in this case, so I know that I could draw into my Etos since it's the only card in the deck that's a high level. So it works out very, very nicely. 
But uh, but anyway, yeah, as far as the ratios go, I'll run my three copies of Tamer Winda, I'll run my three copies of Guardian Eidos, three copies of Spiritual Beast Canahawk, three copies of Spiritual Beast Petalfin, three copies of Ritual Beast Tamer Elder, three copies of Spiritual Beast Apaleo, and two copies of All of Disruption to round things out at 20 cards for the deck. Now, you can play with the ratios as much as you want. If you're expecting more uh, cards in your graveyard, you can always run the other Ritual uh, Beast Tamer that can uh, fish a... Uh, a spiritual beast out of your graveyard, and then you could get into your other play. I mean, there there's so many ways you could build this deck. But as far as PVE goes, ritual beast decks are actually a lot of fun, and I wasn't expecting to have as much fun with this type of build as I actually am. Uh, it's not really the most meta relevant, but it can kind of catch your opponent off guard. It actually does really well in the turbo duels because there's a lot of normal summons involved. If you have your elder uh, that you're able to do two normal summons in a turn, it helps you out. And then uh, I've actually won quite a few turbo duels that way using uh, Ritual Beast to clear out any problem monsters on the other side of the field. So anyway, that's really it for my uh, Ritual Beast deck. Uh, That's it for this week's casual deck, and I will see you next time. Take care. All right, thanks, Doug. And you can check out Doug every week on this podcast with a new casual deck of the week. Or check him out on Twitter, Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck Talk. Upcoming news, the next event is Transcend Game Part 2. We get to obtain the Unknown Duelist. Great. Um, She is the wild card going into the Kaiba Cup because she might have new skills, new cards that are very useful. I'm not sure if those cards, the... um, on Stellars or Cubics would make a splash, but she could just have some skill that just fits in with another deck. So um, definitely uh, something to check out there. Early November Mission Circuit with new SR Centaur Mina. The KC Cup begins November 14th to the 24th, so most of the month, uh, middle of the month. Mid-November Tour Guide Mission Bingo with Kite Void. Late November Tag Duel Tournament. Vylon Prison and Dark Archetype are new cards. Alluring Alexis is back in late November. Cyber Tutu Bond and new um, uh, Cyber Angel card, Magnificent Machine Angel. Late November, Jaden and Yubel are retired to the gate. And then you can check the list during your opponent's turn. I think this is active already, if I'm not mistaken. I saw it in the tip screen. So it's possible you can already check uh, what cards are in your graveyard or banished during your opponent's turn. All right, so I'd like to thank everyone uh, for talking on Twitter. Uh, I've been on the list for a few follow Fridays, and I'm really thankful for all the people who appreciate the podcast and are putting me putting this podcast on their follow Friday list. So thank you very much, everyone. And the people who talk to me on CastBox, and, uh, I got a review on CastBox, that was pretty cool, too. So uh, thanks for the support, everyone. And you can check out this podcast anywhere. Uh, listen and subscribe. Just search the Dual Assessment Podcast wherever you are, and you'll find it. All these notes, however incomplete or inaccurate they are, are on the dualassessment.wordpress.com and Twitter, where you can do the question of the week, dual underscore assessment. All right. Thanks, everyone, and I will see you next time.